Welcome to another episode of the Wool and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I'm the dyer and maker behind Wool and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located here in northern Germany, where I play with natural dyes and natural yarns. Um, today is the episode where I can show you everything that we prepared for the October collection. Um, and for those of you who are new here, I usually record these kind of videos to show you what we'll have in the monthly collection and what we dyed over the past couple of weeks um, in natural lighting and movement because I feel this is the best way to showcase natural, um, naturally dyed yarn because yeah, natural colors can be a pain to photograph and so this little format is something I um, like to do to kind of give you a better idea of how the colorways might look like in real life. Um, the October collection is, I don't want to say my favorite, but October is one of my favorite months and I can totally feel inspiration strike so much when the days are getting colder and leaves are turning color. And so I'm incredibly excited to uh, share with you what I prepared over the past couple of weeks. Um, it's going to be a big collection and that is what, because we... Um, we have a lot of international customers, hi there, <laughs> and with shipping and everything before the holiday season, um, I think it's always a bit tricky to, to kind of, you know, predict how things are going. Currently, shipping times to overseas uh, destinations are pretty, like, doable, but sometimes, um, before the holiday season, at least that's what happened in the past years, um, it can slow down quite a bit and... Therefore, we decided to do a big, big collection for October and then another small one for November and uh, um, December will not have a proper shop update. At least that's how the planning goes for now. And so, um, yeah, this uh, was designed to be a really big autumn collection um, so we can kind of slow down to the end of the year and... We prepared a lot of specials and restocks and uh, yeah, a lot of nice things for this collection. And so without further ado, let me start sharing with you what we'll have available in this uh, collection. As a quick little overview, um, we will have a couple of different bases in this update. Um, starting with our new sock yarn base over sock. Um, Next up, we will have a restock of a very classic base that we didn't have in quite some months. I cannot really remember when we had it the last time, but it must have been somewhere around spring. Um, but we'll also restock our BFL Massum uh, bases in both weights. I'm going to go in depth about um, all the specs and remind you of what the yarn bases are um, in a bit. But just a quick overview, we will have the BFM SM DK and 4-ply. And we will bring back um, something that we also didn't stock for a really long time. And that is our rustic merino base. And we will have that one in two weights and several natural colors as well. Um, so yeah, those are the classic bases, let's say it that way. And we will also launch the October sock box um, in this collection, which... You might have seen uh, on my Instagram recently as I posted a reel about it just uh, a few days ago. So yeah, it's uh, a very special sock box again. Um, for those of you who didn't see or hear about it before, we were starting to launch uh, monthly sock boxes um, in August to celebrate the launch of our new custom spun sock yarn Ovis. And those were coming every month and we had several designers and notion makers and just wonderful creatives uh, joining me in uh, this little celebration of sock knitting. And so this month we'll have the October uh, sock box and I'm going to show you everything that will be included um, at the end of the video as well. But I guess because we have so much to show, without further ado, let me jump right into showing you the colorways. Okay, so the first bases I want to show to you are our BFL Massen bases. Um, those are a blend of 75% Blueface Leicester and 25% Massen Sheep fibers and um, are available in a DK weight, which is a 240 meters per 100 grams and a 400 meters per 100 grams fingering weight version. 
Um, and uh, what we usually try to do and did for this update as well is dye the colorways uh, on both bases so you can kind of choose whether you would like the color on a DK or a 4-ply weight base. Um, I will show them to you on the DK weight base just so you have an idea but they will also be available in the 4-ply version. Um, all info about this base and also a couple of uh, pattern suggestions are up on my website in the bases section and um, so if you type in woolentwine.com and uh, check the little menu at the top you can click the basis uh, page and you can see um, all the specs of this base and also um, uh, the prices and everything so yeah without further ado let me start showing you some colors um, we tried to kind of keep the um, palette kind of autumnal but also add a few not to only warm shades to this one because I felt like I was so inspired by all the warm earthy shades that I also felt the need to add one or two maybe slightly cooler tones to it just so if you're not really into the earthy shades um, yeah you will have something that you might like but let's start out with the undyed colorway this is just its natural base uh, color and it's a light warm gray resulting uh, from the Massam fibers being blended with the BFL because those are a natural brown gray. So this will be available as the base color and I think it's great for color work, it's just the base of a color work sweater. So this is the undyed. Next up, how am I going to start? Um, maybe I'll start out with <laughs> the not so warm shades and then go into the earthy sh section later. So the first colorway I want to show you is almost a classic by now and this one is lavender. It's a light, beautiful lavendery purple um, with quite a coolish undertone I would say. Um, perfect. Uh, for any kind of accessory as well. I knitted myself uh, a hat out of this one quite a while ago. I will see if I can link the corresponding uh, podcast episode where I talk about this below, but it's perfect. It's really lovely and I totally enjoy this shade a lot. Um, next up we will have its kind of companion, if you will, <laughs> and this is a new colorway called Grape. And it's a very dark purple with something like a reddish undertone, I want to say. Um, I used to stock a colorway that's called Plum, and that one is a pretty cool dark purple, but this one is more of a, I don't want to say warm, but reddish undertoned purple. That I think is really beautiful. Also goes really well with lavender, in case you were looking into like a contrasting color that goes well with this one. So these are lavender and grape. Next up in the kind of pinkish purple family, but transitioning into the earthy tones, is uh, a colorway that we, I think, we kind of launched this one on a different base a couple of months ago and it has been a favorite until then. So this one is Hawthorn. And it appears a bit more orangey on camera, I would say, but it's a very um, earthy, muted pink almost, um, but with very earthy undertones. So it's almost like a neutral with a bit of a pink, which I really like. So yeah, this is Hawthorne. Next up in the earthy shade region, we are gonna restock another classic and this one is Almond and it's like um, a light neutral beige, let's put it that way. It's very great for um, as a base color for color work or if you just need that one more color to knit um, like a fairer sweater then this one goes with almost everything. So this is Almond. Then next up we are going to have another by now classic that we developed I think in summer and this one is hazel and it's a very light um, 
how do you say, not very saturated um, kind of orange, rusty shade. And I think it's like the warm um, sibling to almond. Goes really well with a lot of shades as well, but transitioning more into the warmer shades than almond does. So yeah, those are those colorways. Then we are also going to restock an old favorite <laughs> that I think has been requested so many times in the past couple of months. And I was always like, yes, we're going to restock it at some point. But then there were so many different bases or other bases that we kind of, I don't know, prioritized over the past couple of months. So, but here it is again. This one is caramel and it's uh, a warm caramelly brown with uh, some orangey undertones. Um, and this one is the original colorway that um, Lacke of Fabric Tales designed the Humlebee shawl in. So if you've been looking into this honey-like caramelly shade, um, this is the one. Okay, um, staying in the kind of um, brownish region. Um, this was very requested ever since I posted the little um, question sticker recently about what colorways you would like to see on this base. And this was requested multiple times, so I'm really happy that uh, there was such a, you know, clear outcome of that. <laughs> and this one is Chestnut. It is a slightly more saturated and even more goldish undertoned um, brown compared to caramel. And maybe it's the easiest if I hold them up kind of together. So this one is chestnut. In the middle we have caramel and then on the right we have the hazel colorway. I hope this helps a little bit. I'm wondering if the light is blowing out things ever so slightly. So let me try if I can kind of turn. Whoops, no, wrong direction. Yeah, maybe. Let's see. But this is chestnut, caramel, and hazel. So, yeah, that's how they look next to each other. And next up, we have two more colorways. Um, one of them being a very beautiful and new one. And um, this one is called Hayride. And it's a beautiful mustard yellow. Um, but with less greenish undertones than, for example, our colorways Golden Hour would have. So this one is like a true mustard and I'm absolutely in love with it. I think it's very autumnal. And then last but not least, um, another colorway that I really like. I hope it's going to pick up well on camera because this is one of the colorways that's really hard to show on camera. But this one is Auburn and it's a dark chocolatey brown with like a reddish purple undertone. I hope that's visible on camera. It's actually one of my favorites. And if you've watched my most recent pod podcast episodes where I was talking about my knitting, um, this one is very close to the colorway that I used um, as a contrasting color on my Fernwood sweater. I make, I'll make sure to link the episode um, or one of the episodes somewhere um, because yeah, I've got a couple of questions and this is the colorway that I used for the contrast in my Fernwood. So it was dyed on a different base, but you get the idea. So yeah, this is uh, the last two colorways on our BFM Assam base. As mentioned, all the colorways will also be available um, on the four ply version of this base. So in case you are not really into like a heavy DK white sweater, but would like to have a shawl or something in a slightly lighter weight, um, this will be um, possible, no problem. So yeah, these were all the colorways on the BFM Mastem base. Um, I'm really happy with how the collection turned out. <laughs> Trying to hold them all up is always, <laughs> makes me laugh at myself because it's like hilarious. But yeah, I'm really happy with this collection and I'm happy to bring this base back because it's just one of my favorites and will always be. And I'm just, I just really enjoy 
dying on it and working with it in general. So, so far about BFMSM. Okay, on to the next section. So the next uh, base I want to talk you through is our rustic merino base. And as I mentioned, I think this was one of the bases that we had on hiatus for a very long time. And it was actually one of our first bases that we ever had whenever we launched Woolen Twenty Fiber Studio back in 2019. So it always has a special place in my heart because it's, yeah, just a very special yarn. And um, I'm super happy to have it back. Um, and it's actually um, a fully, uh, it's, it's a 100% merino sheep. Um, wool but it's a crossbreed merino from um, like the, a German adaption of merino so it's not your typical super sleek soft South American um, or Australian type merino it's um, it has more of a rustic vibe and that's why I called it rustic merino as well um, but it's definitely not in a way rustic that you would say like a plotolopio so it's still yeah, it has a rustic touch uh, in comparison to being a merino, but I think it's very, it's very lovely and it's very lofty because it is um, a woolen spun yarn that's actually um, fully produced here in Germany, uh, in the south of Germany, by a family-run mill, and I'm incredibly happy to have it. Um, so. We will have a couple of natural sheep shades um, on this base. Um, it's a very beautiful base for any kind of transitional sweaters and cardigans and also for, um, yeah, depending on what weight you're choosing for the winter because we're going to have two weights available this time. We're going to have Rustic Merino DK, which is a 285 meters per 100 grams roughly. Um, I know that sounds more like a sport weight, but since this is a woolen spun, it's a very lofty and um, plump yarn and I would not really recommend going much further down than like a three and a half millimeter needle on this uh, yarn. So it's more of a DK in volume, um, but it has a very generous meterage in this case. So it's also, I would say good value for money maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is the DK weight version. And then we'll have a worsted weight version or Aran, if you want to call it that way. It's a 220 meters per 100 grams and it's slightly heavier. Both are two plies, so they are um, kind of the same makeup, but the singles that were spun to be plied for the yarns are a different thickness, and therefore it results in two different yarn weights. And I'm really happy that we also have the worsted weight version back, because I can't really remember that we had a really proper worsted weight yarn in the shop in, for like forever, and so I think it's a good thing um, to prepare for the colder winter days uh, to also have a slightly heavier yarn available um, for this collection. Um, yeah. So let me show you the colorways first, and then I have a couple of swatches, uh, samples, and also an, an, a little announcement about a pattern release, but that's coming at the end of this section. Let me first show you the colorways. So for this colorway uh, showing, I'm going to start um, with the DK weight version, and all of these colorways will also be available in the worsted weight. They are all natural sheep colors, so blended different uh, colors of sheep together. Um, they have not been dyed, so they are all undyed shades, but I decided to give them names um, when we, whenever we first launched them because it's a bit easier to distinguish them. And um, starting with the first colorway, I will show them all on the DK, but as said, you can also imagine them in a worsted weight. And the thread looks pretty much the same, it's just a slightly thicker yarn. So. Uh, this one is the cream colorway, and it's just a natural ecru cream shade. And this is the perfect contrast for any kind of color work you might be planning. I'm going to show you a few examples, actually, uh, later on in swatches. But yeah, this is just the perfect color work uh, contrast, I feel. Um, so this is the natural cream. Next up we will have a fossil, and fossil is a very light, coolish gray that also works really well for a color work contrast with, long, um, with darker colors if you don't want as much of a starker contrast. So yeah, this one is fossil, and it's slightly warmer 
companion oatmeal which is like a lighter beige although I feel this batch I mean they are always spun from the sheep fleeces available uh, at the time they are spun and we had this colorway before and I feel like it has become slightly darker since we had it the last time but I really enjoy it it's beautifully warm but also kind of neutral still and I think it's really pretty so yeah, this is the oatmeal colorway. Then we'll gradually go down in depth, <laughs> if you will. This one is the coffee shade. It's uh, a dark, well, not dark. It's more of medium brown, but pretty neutral in undertone, not necessarily very warm. Um, and it kind of reminds me of our rye uh, colorway shade that we had on Thrive earlier this year. So yeah. This is the coffee colorway and um, I'll try to show them side by side in the color families. So oatmeal and coffee side by side. And then the darkest in the kind of brown beige family and this one is espresso. And it's a really dark saturated but a slightly more warmish brown. And let me try to hold them up. So these are the three in the kind of brown beige color family. So oatmeal, coffee and espresso. And last but not least, we have one more gray shade that I'm also going to show you uh, next to the other grays or the other gray that we'll have. And this one is Pebble and it's a slightly more, um, slightly darker, gray than fossil is. Here it is for comparison. So fossil is much lighter than pebble. And to complete it all, I will also show you cream next to it. So just so you have an idea of how it looks like. So we have cream, fossil and pebble next to each other. And speaking of, um, Cream and Pebble, these were the two colorways that were used um, for a new design that will actually come out uh, on the 27th uh, of October with the October collection. So um, in case you want to knit the design, <laughs> you can get the uh, yarn for it as well. And uh, these two colors were also used by, as you know, one of my absolute favorite designers, Tanya Barley of the Woolbarrow. We use these to create one of the most beautiful, um, simplistic, um, but also kind of interesting color work patterns that I've ever seen. And they were used for the rustic sweater, rustic with a K at the end. And uh, that one is going to come out as said on the 27th as well. And it's a stunning yoke pattern of like slip stitches and such that's really easy to work actually um, it looks pretty intricate but it's quite easy to do so another genius move from Tanya I guess <laughs> um, but it's very beautiful and I'll make sure to um, link all the info to Tanya's page and all that below um, and I actually prepared a couple of swatches just so you can see um, here we have the swatch in the original colorway combination, um, pebble and cream. I don't really remember what way around it worked, <laughs> but you can get the idea. So you can see that there is like, it's a bit of a low contrast color work, but uh, you can still see because of the slip stitches being pretty prominent, you can see the pattern quite well, even though the contrast is quite low. And just to give you an idea of how it can look in other colorways, um, we also prepared some swatches in other combinations. So this one is, um, so these were pebble and cream, the original colorway that it was designed in. Then we'll have oatmeal and cream, which I think is my personal favorite um, because it's a slight bit more warmish in undertone. Then we also did some slightly higher contrast ones and this one is really interesting um, because I kind of would have expected it to turn out different but the higher the contrast it's actually a bit harder to see. So 
This one is um, oatmeal and espresso with um, espresso being the main color um, or let's say the, the prominent dominant color. And I think it's a bit difficult to see, but then if you switch the two colorways around, it's much more easy to see. <laughs> Interesting, right? So yeah, we just switched the two colors for these two swatches. Anyhow, I think it's really pretty. And now I'm, I, I'm, I'm actually thinking it would also look really nice to combine coffee and um, the cream colorway, because I think this uh, would also go really well together um, for this type of swatch or for this type of pattern. So yeah, I'm incredibly thankful for working with uh, Tanya again. It's always a pleasure. And um, yeah, I can, I can really imagine um, myself wearing more colorwork sweaters as it's getting colder and colder and I definitely have to knit my own version. So I really hope I will have a little bit of time soon to uh, knit my own rustic sweater version. Um, until then, I will admire the swatches <laughs> and make up my mind on what color combination I want to use. Um, but yeah, I think that is it for the rustic sweater announcement. I will make sure to link everything uh, below that you need to know about it. And um, yeah, I guess that is it. I will continue showing you some other samples so you can have an idea of how this yarn uh, knits up in other types of projects. So since uh, we didn't have this yarn uh, in stock for quite a while, I was thinking I could show you a couple of um, samples that I knitted a while ago. Um, or one knitted, it was knitted by my mom, I have to be honest. But um, uh, I don't know if I've ever done a proper um, introduction to this yarn on this channel because yeah, we, we did have it even before I started with the preview videos. So I'm not sure if I ever did it, but uh, I will show you some examples um, because as said, uh, I wanted to stress how extremely uh, suitable this yarn is for color work knitting. And um, not only for these type of slip stitches as in the rustic sweater, but also in traditional st stranded um, color work. And therefore I wanted to show you this sample. And uh, this is the Kati, um sweater by Olan Such. 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 <laughs> I never know how to pronounce it. I'm terribly sorry. Um, but it's a beautiful color work yoke. It usually is, I think, knitted in several colors, but we just did a monochrome uh, version of it. And I really like this one. And you can really see how um, this yarn blooms and makes a very even color work um, or stranded color work as well. So yeah, just wanted to show to you how extremely nice and color work suitable this is. It really also is quite bouncy, which I also enjoy and lightweight. So yeah, this is the Kati uh, sweater. I hope I'm saying this right. Um, and I think I should have my notes up on Ravelry if you want to look this project up and I will also do my best to find <laughs> the podcast episode where I talk about it and link it down below so in case you want more info. But the colors I used are cream or mom used. The colors uh, are cream and espresso for a pretty high contrast and um, I just weighed this sweater and I think it is just below 400 grams in a size 4, so it's a pretty lightweight um, lightweight yarn, if you will. And you can go quite far with the yardage, as said, because um, yeah, it's 285 meters for a DK weight, which is quite a lot in one skein. So, But yeah, this is it. I will make sure to link more info about it below, but just so you can see how nicely it behaves in a color work. Oops. And now the light is getting quite bright in here. Let me try to uh, adjust a few things so we can see things better. Is it okay? Yeah. Um, 
And something completely different to show you uh, how it also can be used. This is actually, um, the Kelty sweater is the DK weight version. I'm not sure if I said that. But I also made a sample years ago in uh, the worsted weight version. And this is my Willa cardigan. And I felt it's very fitting to show this one again because I can feel the trend of traditional uh, cabled uh, pullovers in light colors as is really coming back, isn't it? Um, so yeah, this is my Willa cardigan by uh, Sari Nordlund and it's a beautiful, I don't know if I can even hold it up because it's so huge. It's a beautiful cabled cardigan um, with cables and moss stitch all over the whole thing up until the sleeves. <laughs> And um, I use the Colorway Fossil for this one. And I think I, I don't know when I knitted this one, but it's years ago. And I remember it was so addictive. Um, I couldn't, I really couldn't stop. <laughs> I couldn't stop knitting on it. And it's still one of my favorites until now. I'm actually thinking of making another one. Um, but I made, I think, uh, I made the largest size available at the time. I don't know what it was, but um, it was a pretty large size, so it would suit fit me in a very oversized kind of way. Um, and for this one, um, because it had so many cables and it was the worsted weight version that I used, I think it was around 700 and something grams. So this one is <laughs> quite a bit heavier, but it's also very generous in size for me um, so yeah I just wanted to show you something that's very different uh, both in style and in um, the yarn amount used. I did a few modifications to this pattern I want to be honest because I, I omitted many of the bubbles that are going down one of the cables here usually but they were a bit much to me and I omitted them on the sleeves um, as well I don't know if you can see, but yeah, I didn't do them and I also changed up the ratio at the cuffs slightly because I enjoy um, a slightly shorter cuff than it was uh, called for in the pattern. So that were some modifications I made. Um, I think I also talked about this in a podcast episode before, but I have to find it. If I find it, <laughs> I'm going to put it uh, down below so you can check uh, it out. But uh, yeah, this is my Willa and I'm definitely actually craving another one or at least another project in this style because yeah, I just really enjoy this kind of all over cabling, intricate uh, chart following. I kind of, yeah, I can imagine I'm in the mood for this um, at the moment. So if you have ever... Uh, found a really, really nice size inclusive um, all over cable pattern um, that you want to share with me. Feel free to tell me in the comments below or so. Um, I'm really looking into a project like this uh, that I could work on. But yeah, without uh, further rambling, this is everything about the Rustic Merino uh, base and I'm really happy to bring it back and yeah, I hope you will enjoy it just as much as I do. And without further ado, let me jump into the next section. Okay, on to the next section. Um, last but not least, we will also have a big restock of our uh, new non-superwash and plastic-free sock yarn Ovis that has uh, debuted uh, early in August this year. And it is a 100% uh, woolen sock yarn with a slightly higher twist for durability, spun out of 50% Jacobs and 50% Cheviot fibers. It's a 375 meters per 100 grams, um, so slightly thicker than your traditional uh, fingering weight uh, to achieve a slightly tighter gauge when knitting on socks, which can help with durability as well if you're using uh, non-nylon socks. Um, and I'm co currently running um, a little make-along that is called the Cozy Socks M-A-L. Um, that is also the hashtag used for that one on Instagram. And it's a little make-along all around socks. And you can participate with either Ovis or our older discontinued Sock Yarn Corridale Sock. 
and we will just celebrate sock knitting all together. Um, I also talk more about this in my uh, previous podcast episode that I've linked down below. And uh, I think it's just a lovely way to, you know, engage with others and share our tips and tricks about um, natural sock knitting potentially. Um, but yeah, until now, it's just hosted on Instagram, but potentially I will broaden um, to another platform if enough interest is there. But yeah, if you feel like sharing your finished uh, sock projects on Instagram with us, then use the hashtag CozySocksMAL, so not Cal, but MAL, because I also invite crochet and other maker um, crafts <laughs> um, into this. So it's make along MAL. And yeah, I can't wait to see what you are knitting up. We have quite a few colorways on Ovis as well, so uh, let me not waste any more time, but uh, instead show you what we'll have. So first of all, uh, as we usually... Oh, is it getting a little bit... No, I think we should be okay. But uh, we will have the two undyed shades, uh, undyed ecru and undyed grey, which uh, are just restock. Um, on Oversock um, and those are just the undyed shades just uh, from natural sheepy colors and next up we will have um, some restocks and some new colorways so let me start with a restock that is hazel uh, I also showed this one on BFM Massam beautiful warm um, nice beigey undertoned orange perfect for this time of year i feel next up we will have hawthorn the here you can see the color slightly better i feel it's a rosy but very muted rosy undertoned um, beige so yeah here is hawthorn then we also dyed Hayride on uh, Ovis, which I think is so autumnal, it screams fallen leaves to me. And I'm really happy with this one. Um, next up, we will have the colorway Iris on Ovis Sock, which is a deep, moody, Halloween-y kind of purple, I feel. So yeah, and then we'll also have um, our colorway Auburn on Oversock, and this one is so nice. I'm actually having a hard time not keeping a skein for myself. I might have to after all, but this is so beautiful, I feel. It's a warm, reddish undertoned brown. I think it's just so pretty. We will have our colorway Woodlands. It looks a bit more reddish in undertone uh, here on camera, but it's definitely a bit more neutral brown. Slightly less variegated than last time, but that's how it goes with natural dye sometimes, you know? It can always be a bit different. But yeah, I still really love this color. Oh, here yeah, you can see the tone a bit better, I guess, this way. So yeah, Woodlands will be back, as well as Chestnut, which is a warm, orangey kind of brown that just reminds me of roasted chestnuts. I think it's really pretty. And last but not least in the kind of solid um, colorway family we will also restock our colorway Luna which is a slight like slightly uh, warm toned neutral that I think goes so well with any kind of color work um, sock potentially and especially let me show you some combos if you want to do like a color work with some of the warmer shades I think it's less harsh um, in contrast than, for example, um, the undyed Ecru would be. So that's what I really like about Luna. 
So yeah, that is the Luna colorway. Um, I will also, because I already, oops, now I dropped one. I already know that someone will ask this. Um, so let me show you the kind of brownish color family next to each other so you can see the difference. Oh, my hair is really annoying today, I'm sorry. So here we have hazel, then we have chestnut, then we have woodlands, and then we have the um, auburn colorway all next to each other. Hope this helps a little bit with um, decisions. But yeah, those are the solids on uh, Oversock and I also, uh, because I really felt inspired by uh, the colors of autumn recently, I decided to spontaneously dye a couple of really autumnal multicolors and I'm so happy with how these turned out, I can't believe it. So they have very classic autumnal names and with these multicolors it's always the case that they are not really repeatable. Um, although I do have kind of recipes for them, it's very hard to, you know, make them turn out kind of similar every time I dye them. So I might not really have a chance to uh, give them a return. I would have to try, but yeah, if you're eyeing one of those, it might be a good idea to be on time uh, for the shop update. Um, so let me start out with the first one. This one is Pumpkin Patch and it's a very uh, orangey, punchy, kind of um, variegated colorway with lots of yellows, oranges and rust shades in it and I love this one. So this is Pumpkin Patch. Next up we will have Apple Cider and this is slightly less punchy, a bit more yellowy and even maybe a bit more pastel-y an undertone. So this one is apple cider and I'm loving this one as well. I'm having a hard time <laughs> keeping some for myself because I'm really craving some maybe you know kind of variegated uh, socks. Let's see maybe I'll keep one and I think this one might even be my favorite. This one is sweater weather and it's it has some uh, yeah, dark browns and olives and rusts and reds and yeah, all kinds of shades that I kind of feel resemble autumn really well. So yeah, this one is sweater weather and I hope you can see the depth of this shade. I'm really happy with how it dyed. So yeah. Let me hold them up next to each other. So this one is sweater weather, then we have apple cider in the mid middle and pumpkin patch uh, on this side. So these are our multicolors for this collection. And last but not least, we have a few sock sets, but these are kind of tied to the whole concept of the October sock box. So I have to show you the October sock box first and then show you some more of the sock sets because <laughs> without further ado let me show it to you. For the October sock box uh, I teamed up with my friend Anna uh, Sjösvard who is a knitwear designer from Sweden and she designed the absolute most adorable um, pattern for this box and this is it. It is uh, called A Shortcut to Mushrooms and yeah you know how much I love the Lord of the Rings and all things Tolkien, so this really called my name. <laughs> and they have this sweet little color work motif at the top and um, this features one main color, so one big skein and then two um, mini skeins uh, to knit the color work and therefore we also prepared some sock sets. Uh, in other color combinations, but let them show show to you. Let me show them to you a little bit later. I'm gonna start showing you the socks for now. So they are so cute. You knit those color work. Um, it's it's knitted toe up. So you start at the toe and then work your way through the foot and the little heel, and then you start the color work pattern. 
And you only have to do two colors at once because the little uh, dots on the mushrooms, they are added later on. Um, so you can embroider them at the end, which is pretty handy because, yeah, you know, handling two, three colors at once in color work knitting can be quite fiddly, I feel. Yeah, but then they are bound off at the top and they are the sweetest little socks, I feel. Um, and as a little bonus for this pattern, um, and because it's, you know, if you just use a little bit of uh, yarn for a color work, it sometimes feels a little wasteful. And Anna also designed a corresponding mushroom ornament that you can knit with the leftovers from the sock project, which I think is just so sweet and I'm just so happy with it. So <laughs> it makes me incredibly happy. And yeah, these are the a Shortcut to Mushroom Socks um, by Anna Sjöswad. And um, they are part of the October sock box. As mentioned, um, we will have these monthly boxes running until November. So this is the best to last um, sock box. And I always teamed up with a knitwear designer. In this case, it's Anna. And some notion makers or makers of, you know, things you can use for your knitting. And um, the box will have everything in there, the pattern, the yarn, and the notions. Uh, okay, the battery of my camera just died and I had to change it. But I was just talking to you about um, that I also teamed up with other makers um, on the sock boxes. And for this uh, month, let me show them uh, to you or let me show to you what we will also have in the box. So uh, one of the things, that we'll have in the box is this, and it's a little handmade wooden jar in the shape of an acorn. And isn't this just so sweet? It is um, by Deegan US and it's handmade. And I think it's just so sweet. You can use this one as a little, um, you know, box. You can just, the lid pops off and then it's empty inside and you can just put a few stitch markers or so inside and um, yeah, keep everything organized if you will. And actually the a lid closes quite firmly, like you have to press it down quite a bit so it won't come off in your project bag, which is pretty handy I feel. And I think it's so cute, isn't it? So made from 100% wood as well. And did I even tell you the inspiration behind it all? I probably did somewhere else, but I didn't mention it in the video. So everything was inspired by um, walks in the woods and, you know, foraging in the forest and uh, foraging for the little treasures that the woods might have for us. So this little acorn uh, box or jar fills that very well, I feel. So yeah, that is the little wooden icon box. And we will also have a little progress keeper. And this one is in the shape of a mushroom as well. Isn't this so sweet? It is hand felted and made by the wonderful Bella of 100 Acre Wool. And I will link her, um, I will link everyone's info below, but she also has a podcast here on YouTube. So in case you would like to check her out, she does beautiful things and also designs beautiful uh, knitting patterns. So yeah, but these mushrooms, aren't they just so cute? And I think they even match the color of the mushrooms on the pattern, which I think is the best thing because I mean, we created everything being very far away from each other, like even having a big ocean between us and things are so fitting so well, I feel. I'm really happy. So these are the Progress Keepers, hand felted by Bella of 100 Acre Wool. And let me hold everything up together. Like how sweet is this? I think it suits the... Um, the inspiration behind it so well and I'm incredibly happy about this. It really makes me 
so glad because mushroom hunting has become one of my favorite activities in the fall um, since last year and yeah I'm just really really happy that we were able to bring this little mushroom and forest walk inspired um, box to life with all these wonderful makers. I couldn't be happier um, and thank you to everyone who contributed to the October sock box. It's so wonderful and being able to work with all these beautiful wonderful creatives fills my heart with joy and yeah uh, I wanted to share everything about the admin of the box with you so um, everything I just showed um, the pattern and um, the acorn box and the little mushroom marker will be in the box as well as the corresponding sock set um, to make the a shortcut to mushroom sock. Um, this will be included in the box, so you can are ready and good to go to start working on um, the pattern. It is 100 gram skein and 220 gram skein, so 140 in total. And yeah, this is the original colorway called Forest Treasure, which I found very fitting with the whole theme. And yeah, this will be in the box. Um, the Deegan acorn and uh, the um, 100 acre wall uh, progress keeper, as well as the pattern. And because I get asked this every time <laughs> when you uh, get your um, boxes, the pattern is included in a digital kind of way because we decided, oops, it's getting really dark, just a second. Um, so we decided that it's maybe easier for you to um, have the pattern in Ravelry uh, because the designers are able to send you updates in case there are any. Um, and so we, you will receive a little card that is tied to uh, the skein of yarn that's all wrapped in paper. And it will be tied on it and on the back you will find a QR code and all info you will need to download the pattern. Um, and yeah, just so you know, there will be a little card with my logo on it and on the back there's all the info and the download link. So just in case anyone is wondering. And now, before it gets too dark, I want to show to you uh, what other color combinations we have um, for the socks because I thought, because I love mushrooms and mushroom hunting so much, I wanted to also add other color combinations inspired by uh, mushrooms. And so we will have some more of the sets that you can use for the pattern, but in other color combinations. So without further ado, let me show them to you. This one is the first one and it's called Porcini, which is one of my favorite mushrooms. And it features uh, a brown main skein, a light gray, but warm gray mini. And this is more like a berry, almost like a berry brown inspired by porcini mushrooms. Next up we will have chanterelle and this is an earthy orangey beige full skein, um, another creamy light beige and a beautiful golden chanterelle inspired um, yellow. So this is the chanterelle set. And last but not least, we will have the Russula set, which is a very light neutral beige in the main scheme, a reddish brown in uh, one of the minis, and then a white uh, for contrast as well. So this is the Russula uh, set. Let me hold them up all together. <laughs> These are all the mushroom sock sets that you can use uh, to work um, the shortcut to mushroom socks as well as the original colorway that we will also have individually in case you don't want to purchase the whole box uh, you can also purchase it just as the double mini skein uh, sock set i'm so happy with these <laughs> I've been wanting to make a mushroom inspired uh, collection for so long, so now was the time I had to do it. But yeah, 
this is everything about the collection and since we are getting quite some gloominess here right now I want to wrap up this video with a couple of admin words. Um, everything will launch uh, as the October collection on October 27th at 8 p.m. CET. Please check um, your time zones uh, with that. Um, and with the boxes, um, the past couple of months when we released them, they were gone very fast. Um, and by fast, I mean a couple of minutes. And I had a few emails after that you were uh, checking into the shop update, let's say an hour late and you were disappointed or, or even a day late and were disappointed that there were no boxes left. And I'm sorry, but um, it was the first time I did these kind of boxes and I really didn't know how they would be received. And so I, I have only a limited number of these boxes and there is nothing I can do about it but tell you or ask you to be on time for the update at, you know, 8 p.m. Log in and uh, get your skeins that you're looking into because, yeah, uh, I just don't have more, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but yeah, I guess that is it about the boxes and being on time. I mean, it's generally a good advice to be on time for the shop updates because we currently have a lot of things going off the shelves quite quickly sometimes. So, which is something I'm very grateful for, don't get me wrong. But yeah, I just want you to not be disappointed and know how it all works. Um, yeah, if there are any questions that might be occurring, um, you could uh, do me a favor and email me at hello at willentwine.com. Um, that would be very kind. And yeah, I will do my very best uh, to answer as soon as I can and help you choosing whatever you might be looking for. Um, yeah, what else is there to say? I guess that is everything about this collection. Um, Ah, I should maybe mention about the sock box. Um, the pattern, the shortcut to mushrooms pattern, will also launch individually at the same time. So in case you're not into the whole box thing, you can get the pattern and just the yarn for it or just the pattern. It is all also available individually to make it a little bit easier for you, we thought. Um, so yeah. Uh, and please uh, check out the other makers that I'm featuring here if you don't know them already and maybe, you know, send them some love because they are all amazing. It was great to work with them and I'm incredibly honored um, that you all joined Creative Forces with me in this. Good. I think that finally is it. I can't wait to see what colors you might choose. Let me know what your favorites are below in the comments. I love to read about uh, what whatever you prefer the most in the comments. And until then, see you next week on Friday, hopefully, and happy knitting. Bye.